Welcome to another episode of Growth Hacker TV. I'm Bronson Taylor, and today I have Greg with us. Now, usually I say their last name when I say their first name. Um, your last name is so difficult, I'm just going to have you say it. So your first name is Greg. What's your last name? Pietruszynski. Uh, Pietruszynski. Yes, yes, perfect. perfect. Yeah, and, and you come job. from uh, Poland, which explains the last name, right? Yes, that's true. Yeah, so Greg Pietruszynski. All right, there we go. Um, now, Greg, you are the CEO and founder of GrowBots, and we'll get to that in a second. But first, I want to ask you about your personal stuff for a second, because online your profile says that you've ran over 200 B2B marketing campaigns. And just thinking about that many B2B marketing campaigns makes me exhausted. Um, so first of all, what kinds of campaigns have you been running? Okay, so uh, those were basically mostly campaigns focused on user acquisition mm -hmm. and uh, performance marketing, uh, mostly using social media as I was running uh, the social media agency mm -hmm. myself with my 15 employees <laughs> <laughs> all together. So saying I was responsible for 200 uh, campaigns means that uh, our company did mm -hmm. more than 200 uh, B2B marketing campaigns and of course I was not personally involved in management of all of them sure. but uh, <laughs> I was definitely uh, trying to get involved in the high level concept of each of those. Yeah, so it was a social media agency, 200 different B2B campaigns that you're kind of overseeing. Um, what are the most important things that you walked away from that experience with seeing so many B2B social campaigns? What are, the, what are the lessons you learned in that experience? Mm, I would say that the first lesson every marketer should get is to focus on the quality instead of the quantity. Mm -hmm. So in terms of social media, it was super easy to get focused on uh, acquiring funds, for example, but not really on creating engagement. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, while uh, acquiring new users to um, social applications, most of the people were uh, interested in getting as many users as possible, but not really looking at the effect side. So, for example, how many users are active, how many users uh, invite their friends to use the application, etc. Mm -hmm. Did you have a hard time with your clients because they wanted just vanity metrics, but you of knew course. that engagement <laughs> mattered? Was there always kind of friction there? <laughs> of course, like... Uh, Vanity metrics are like the the most uh, <laughs> difficult uh, problem for every social media marketer, I suppose, because yeah. uh, every customer is like, our competition has more fans. <laughs> Let's get more fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I didn't know that, but I assumed that was the case. Um, all right, now let's talk about GrowBots a little bit. Um, GrowBots is your current company. You're the CEO and founder there, and it's a very interesting concept, so I'm glad we get to kind of dive into it today. So first, at kind of a high level, um, what do you all do at GrowBots? So at the high level, we deliver warm leads to our customers. So basically, we take care of everything what happens before our customers have a demo scheduled with a potential customer. Okay, so when you say a warm lead, so if a company is working with you guys, they end up with an Excel document of leads once a week or once a month, and then they take it from there and kind of close the deal. Is that how it works? Uh, not really, because uh, we outreach the prospects on behalf of our customers, mm -hmm. so they only speak with the people who already said they are interested in learning more about the product. All right, so they're actually warm leads for that specific product, not yes, just a exactly. lead for that industry in general. Yes, yes, yes. It's, ah, not like gotcha. it's not like purchasing a list of potential customers, but uh, uh, the, the, the phrase warm leads indicates that yeah. people already know they want <laughs> to yeah. buy the product. So is it fair to say that if you kind of think about it like a funnel, and conversion is somewhere in the middle of the funnel, you do everything right up to the actual conversion of them becoming a customer, and that's yes. where you hand it over to the company. Is that right? Yes, exactly. This is All how right. it works. I, I like this concept. It's fun. It's different, you know? Um, usually have people that try to do the whole funnel or they just do traffic. You guys are somewhere in between where you actually get them up to the point of conversion. So that's kind of fun. Um, now, on your yeah, site... It, it, because, okay. yeah, because, because uh, we believe that the customers mm, do the best job on closing the deals. Mm. They know the product best. So, you know, 
if we would like to get involved in the process of closing the deals, we would have to coach our uh, sales reps, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and we would never reach the same level mm. of knowing the product as they do. Yeah. Is there ever a problem when you hand over that lead? Does the lead ever feel like, oh, now I'm dealing with somebody else and it's a jarring experience, or is it a pretty smooth transition from warm lead to converted user? Uh, it's a pretty uh, smooth convert, uh, transition because we pretend to be a part of our customer sales team. So they don't know they're getting handed off. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I like that. All right, now, um, you guys are just for SaaS products, is that correct? Yes, yes, we focus on the uh, SaaS B2B market. Yeah, uh, what's the reason there? Why would you guys just pick SaaS B2B? Because a lot of industries could use warm leads. So what made you kind of want to go there? Of course, but uh, like SaaS companies' customers are accustomed to the online sales funnel, mm -hmm. so uh, it's it's uh, like the conversion rates are the best when you deal with this kind of uh, of products mm. because uh, you know people are uh, used to buying uh, other application online or uh, you know taking part in a trial. Or just you know seeing a demo of the product without an actual meeting, mm -hmm. uh, etc. So it's easier to actually get a warm lead for a SaaS company because of the t kinds of customers you're dealing with. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. Now on your site it says that you all create automated customer acquisition. Um, so let me ask you about that. Is it automated to the client because they don't have to deal with it anymore? Or do you guys actually automate it internally so that eventually you don't have to deal with it either and it's just happening on its own? Well, what exactly <laughs> is automated about it? <laughs> okay, so definitely uh, it's automated from the customer side. So they don't care about anything. We do the job. And of course, it's automated on our side because otherwise we wouldn't be able to work with so many customers. I gotcha. All right, so you create, initially you have to do some work, but eventually you get kind of an automated system just pouring in warm leads into these businesses that you're working with. Yes, exactly. Now we operate the software ourselves, but we are also working on the SaaS platform, which will be released in a couple of months. Ah, and then, will it be kind of a self-serve thing? Yes, exactly. So you've actually done the process enough, you know what's going to work, and you can actually just make a product out of it. <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's cool. All right, so let's walk me through the actual GrowBots process. Um, so first... You know, you guys are dealing with SaaS clients. Is a part of that reason because they have a high lifetime value and you know that you can make the money you need to there? Is that kind of the stage one, make sure they have customers worth money? Yes, yes, that's true. You know, uh, you need to generate a certain uh, amount of revenue mm -hmm. on your customers to implement outbound sales process because it's very complex. Uh, and uh, and we have to make sure that our customers will experience the positive ROI on our services. Gotcha. And now you said you've done it enough that it's going to become its own product. So what exactly are you doing? I mean, give me as much as you can about what that process really is. Are you using paid traffic? Is it inbound? Is it email marketing? Is it social? Is it something totally different that I've never even heard of? Like, what are you guys actually doing to get people out in the world to become these warm leads such that it's eventually going to be its own product? Okay, so we start from generating a list of uh, potential customers that meet uh, the mm, uh, qualification criteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we also automate the outreach. So we combine uh, social media outreach, email outreach uh, in one tool. Oh, so wait, so you, when you say you make a list of potential customers, it's actually a list of names. It's not just a list of, we want a person with this kind of income, with this size family, you're actually listing names somewhere. Yes, exactly. Ah. We are listing every potential customer there is on okay. the market and we, could, and we can find it. Sure, and <laughs> you're, you're searching Twitter for that, you're searching LinkedIn for that. Where are you going to, to kind of generate that list? Okay, so we are cross-checking uh, data from different databases. So basically we are using whatever uh, data we can find. Ah, I gotcha. Which means, uh, of course, like uh, LinkedIn, uh, for some customers, it's also uh, like job offer sites, it's Yelp. Mm -hmm. So we can plug in different data sources to get as good uh, qualification uh, possibilities as, uh, as we can. I got you. All right. So you use all these different platforms. You get a list of people. 
Um, and part of what your tool that you're building is going to do is kind of automate getting that list. So you're pulling together all those APIs to do it automatically eventually, right? Yes, yes. That's gotcha. True. So you get the list. Then what do you do with that list? You said it's a, it's a mix of kind of reaching out through email, reaching out through social. Is the Eventually the next step is you just get in touch with them somehow. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. This is how it works. So once we have the list, then we have to use as many channels as possible to convert as many of the prospects into uh, demos and hopefully into paying customers. Okay, so you say you convert them to a demo. So you reach out and is it, is it an email that says, hey, watch this video demo? Or is it a, hey, you might be interested in this product. Can we tell you more about it? Like, what is your call to action that first time? Because they don't know who you are. It's a cold email or it's a cold social interaction. So what is the first sale you're trying to get with them? Okay, so basically it is not a cold email. And this is uh, our unique value here. Mm -hmm. Because we use social media to start a little interaction with Ah, our prospects before they get an email. So there is... uh, there is already some uh, some context mm-hmm. you can refer to uh, when sending the email, and it uh, it helps us to achieve conversion rates to positive answers even uh, higher than fifty percent. So, okay. So, it's so is really so is the email well. something like, "Hey, I'm the guy that tweeted at you a couple days ago on Twitter, and I have this thing that you might be interested in. Do you want to talk about it? Is that what the email looks like?" Yes, exactly. And you don't have to be. Uh, you know, too sellish mm-hmm. because you already know that this customer is a great fit for your product. So you, you just get him, him on a phone, <laughs> and then when you get 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 him on a phone, it's easy. It's easy. It is an easy sell. Okay, so your goal is to get them on the phone. Uh, yes, to okay, get them on the then, phone with our customers. All right, and so then when you give those warm leads to the client, it's actually here's their name, here's the date when they want to get on the phone with somebody, and here's their phone numbers. Is that kind of thing? Yes, exactly. Ah, and then they actually have someone on their side get on the phone and actually walk them through their product, and then you've got a really high chance of selling because of the whole funnel just warmed them up to the point they're actually on the phone. Yes. Ah, yes. I, see, I see what you're doing now. I like it. Okay. I had to dig in because I wasn't sure about how this whole process actually worked. Um, do a lot of SaaS companies have the ability to get on the phone that many times, like they they're able to do that, or they like doing that. What's the what's the response from that side of the market? Okay, so uh, right now we focus on the customers who uh, provide enterprise enterprise plans. Uh, okay, so they so, have the ability to have a sales team. Yes, they have people who are trained to provide demos to potential customers, because uh, to be honest, uh, no no non. Uh, enterprise customers will ever buy like a piece of software worth like a thousand or two thousand dollar a month mm-hmm. without having any personal contact with. Like it, it is very unlikely. Yeah, no, it makes sense. And so now, now I'm starting to see kind of why your numbers work the way they do. Because you charge, I think it's 150 dollars per warm lead, but that's because the lifetime value of that customer is way higher than 150 dollars. So that's yes. why the numbers actually work. Where if it's a small SaaS company or a startup, they're going to have a hard time using it. Yes, that's true. But uh, we calculate the the pricing to provide our customers with at least three or four hundred percent of ROI on our services, mm-hmm. and we stick to that. If we cannot ma- uh, meet this metric, we will not uh, do a project right now with a customer. Gotcha. When we have a self-operated platform, then of course everyone can use it. Mm-hmm. And the call to action then might be, for example, a trial registration instead of a demo. Mm-hmm. And this way, uh, we, could, we can go also go uh, a bit down the market. Yeah. Now, what is, tell me some of the big success stories. You know, and you don't have to name their names you know, of your clients. But what are a few of the stories where this just worked really well for them and it, it was really a game changer for them? Uh, so basically, what we are doing, uh, we are uh, trying to find a creative way of, of finding uh, customer um, uh, ideal customers. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry for this. No, no. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, for example, some of the customers are targeting a very specified niche, uh, who's using a very specific technology. Somewhere in the back uh, uh, back end mm-hmm. of their software, 
and uh, basically you cannot see from outside uh, what technology they are using. So that's why we started cross-checking the data uh, with uh, job offer sites, because if a company is uh, posting a job offer on AWS, for example, mm -hmm. they have to use it internally. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so this is on the uh, lead qualification side. Also, uh, uh, we have like a very cool uh, machine for uh, Twitter communication automation. So uh, we found out that if you focus on uh, the conversation that include links and go around sharing content, then uh, the 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 per the chance of getting somebody involved in the conversation is uh, the highest. If you share so, content directly to them on social media, so oh yes. So, but, uh, imagine that you are uh, sh sharing a link on, for example, ten best tools to improve your social media strategy. Uh -huh. So we have a tool that extracts the keywords from uh, from this link, uh, matches it in with related content, then wraps it up with a template uh, we already pre-written, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we have a ready-to-use tweet. To answer to your tweet and uh, <laughs> kind of get you into the conversation. Uh, that's awesome. If people only knew how much of Twitter conversations weren't actually happening, they just look yes, like they're yes, happening. But, <laughs> but what we are not doing is those, you know, automated favorites or, mm -hmm. or automatic direct messages because it doesn't feel mm -hmm. uh, right. It feels a bit too spammy. So yeah, with, with what so we try to give it. Like it doesn't a human feel spammy time. because nobody knows it's not real. <laughs> it looks real. <laughs> That's the only difference <laughs> that nobody can tell. Uh, that's awesome. Well, you guys are doing some cool stuff with data and how you're pulling together. Um, that's for sure. So that's, that's, that's it's, a, it's a cool product you have, and I think you guys are going to have a lot of success as you move forward. Um, let's talk about SaaS growth kind of in general for a moment. You know, if someone's watching or listening right now, I mean, here you are, the guy that grows SaaS companies. Um, where would you tell them to start? Should they, you know, if they don't want to use you guys, should they do the same thing on their own? Just have real engagement on social media, prospect who they're trying to sell to, and try to get them on the phone. Should that be something other people try to tackle? Or should they just go to paid traffic? Or should they just go somewhere else? Where do you think somebody should start when they're really trying to grow their user base? Do you have any ideas on that? Uh, if, you, if you create a SaaS B2B software, it's always best to go after like a limited number of high-value customers. Mm. You know they are great fit, so you can spend a lot of time mm, trying to convert them mm -hmm. to your customers because uh, it, it's much better to uh, acquire one, one customer that will pay you $1,000 than uh, 50 that will pay you to, uh, to 20 for example. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I would I would rather advise uh, to focus on the enterprise customers or have high value customers on the really beginning, and this is where you can use uh, the tactics I mentioned also. Yeah. No, this so, is a, this so is making a, a list, trying to trying to uh, put a lot of effort in personalizing the communication mm -hmm. and and slowly converting your list into into your customers. Yeah, and even you know even though they don't have all these automated things like you guys now have they could do this just you know with real interaction because if they're only just going after a certain number of people they have real conversations with them they follow up with them through email try to get them on the phone um, they could do that all by hand and reach out to 20 30 40 people you know each week if they're trying to really get something started and they could yes that's true and uh, also on the beginning it is very important to get feedback from your users so this contact the, the, this personal contact really helps to get a lot of feedback that is really useful for product improvement. Yeah. No, I really like your all's process. It's, it's something different, uh, which is welcome. Um, so I have a few final questions for you here. Uh, what, are you, what are you working on today at Growbots when this interview is over? It's a question I've been asking people lately, and it seems to have fun responses because you get to see kind of a window into their life today. So what are you working <laughs> on after this is over? Uh... I, I have a few meetings scheduled here in San Francisco, and uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, we need to move move forward quite uh, quite fast with our product. Mm -hmm. So there are those daily stand ups, and then discussing the progress. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. And new ideas, yes. Absolutely. All right, last question: uh, What is the best advice you have for any startup that's trying to grow? 
And I think I might know what you're gonna say, but go ahead anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would suggest to to uh, focus on solving one problem on the one market, and then to use one uh, user acquisition channels or customer acquisition channel, because uh, the, the truth is that there is always not enough time for anything at the startup, so so it's best to keep it really simple. Yeah. Well, Greg, thank you again for coming on Growth Hacker TV. This has been an awesome interview. Thank you very much.